Okay, we are live and streaming. And John, I'm going to just see if we have an attend any attendees that are okay. TCC members that I need to grab. I'm going to bring, um, let me talk to Tom Calfit here. Hi, Tom. Tom Kalfa. Karen. Hi, I just said you'll be representing GDOT today. Uh, yes, I actually leave early at two o'clock, but um, okay. I can I can stay until then. Great, thank you. I'm gonna put you on the list before the roll call here. Um, and um, Anne Marie Day, thank you for joining us. Let me put you on the list. A couple more folks have joined us. So I think I have everyone. I'm double checking the attendees. We still have a few folks joining us. Okay, John, I think we're ready to go. Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to our November 10th TCC meeting of the Hamilton County, North Georgia TPO. And uh, as you know, we are in a COVID epidemic and uh, in response to the governor's executive order for conducting virtual meetings, the TCC finds that conducting this meeting by virtual means is necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of, of the TCC members, the staff, and the public. So this meeting is being recorded and streaming live on RPA's YouTube channel. So if you prefer to view the meeting that way, you'll see in the chat box a YouTube link that you can access to follow the meeting. As part of the governor's executive order, all votes, including our attendance, must be conducted by a roll call vote. Uh, so we'll start off with a roll call vote to ensure we have a quorum. Um, as a reminder, any attendees uh, who wish to speak today must register prior to this meeting to do so. Um, this information was provided to stakeholders as part of our notification procedures. It is also posted on RPA's website. Um, we have had no one provide written comments in advance of today's meeting. Okay, so with that, we're going to do a roll call vote to establish a quorum. And I'll turn it over to Karen Rennick if you'll uh, do roll call, please. Sure, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna mention three new people because they'll be part of the uh, roll call. Um, so we have uh, Scott Hamby joining us representing Hamilton County. He's their new project designer and is the designee for Todd Lehman, John Agin, or Autumn Friday. We have him in for um, Todd Lehman who is unable to join us today. Um, also joining us is Katie Snyder. She's CDOT's new city transportation engineer and is representing um, Chattanooga in that seat. And we have Chanel Hippix. She's the new Southeast Tennessee Regional Planning Organization coordinator. That's our um, rural counterpart um, in the counties surrounding us. And um, she'll be taking this spot that uh, Chad Reese had fulfilled for many, many years. So um, they'll be part of the roll call, but just wanted to let you know that we do have those changes. So starting from the top, um, Jeremy Bryson. Present here. Chanel Hippix. Present. Thank you, Eric Asbo. Uh, present. Katie Snyder. I'm present. Matthew Snyder. Present. Annie Powell. Present. Wayne Hines. Present. Chris Dorsey. Present. Autumn Friday. Present. Scott Hanby. And Scott uh, says hello, and I think Scott's mic is not working, so I have him as a here. Stephanie Deloqui. Here. Julianne Meadows. Here. Thank you, Julianne. Darian Collins. Here. Mike Cagle. I'm here. Thank you, Mike. Loretta Hopper. Here. Thank you. Bert Johnson. Here. Tom Kalfa. Tom Kalfa. Uh, here. Thanks, uh, Tom. Yeah. Andrea Noel. Here. Anne Marie Day. Here. Thank you, Anne Marie. Elizabeth Watkins. Here. OK, 
Okay, thank you. And um, Anne-Marie Day and Elizabeth Watkins are our um, Federal Highway Administration representatives from the Georgia and TDOT divisions. And we um, have them participating as part of the roll call, but they will not, um, will not call their names for the votes. But just to let you know, that's why. So, uh, Mr. Chair, we are ready to proceed. Okay, um, before I get started on the agenda, I just want to let y'all know, um, we do have one item on today's agenda where you'll be doing a this is for the board members to be doing a survey and, and to kind of get you prepared for that is agenda item number, I think get this right here, number eight, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Karen, correct. number That's eight. You, uh, so just make, there's a PDF link you should have received um, and that'll show you the list of items that you will be voting on. So I'm just kind of letting the TCC members know ahead of time, just kind of get that open in your, your windows, your desktops. If you're having any trouble, I guess just note in the chat or just send, uh, who did share notice, Karen, if they had a, problems opening that up. Sure, let me um, provide a little clarification. We do have two things. The packet link should be available in the chat under that Google Drive link. Um, that's one of, we only shared two links there. Um, okay. And we've encouraged folks, that's our normal packet location. We're just directing you to the packet there. And then we will be, um, some of you would have gotten the survey monkey link earlier, just as kind of a backup, but we will be putting a survey monkey link in for the TDOT prioritization, but we'll, we'll do that a little bit closer um, to that. Um, so hopefully you're able to access the packet and Melissa's sharing her screen with the agenda. Great, thank you. All and right, you can that. chat to chat. Um, we, the chat is um, not enabled for just uh, attendees, but it is enabled for panelists. So if you have a question, please chat and we'll address it if we can. Okay, thank you, Karen. So with that, we'll get started with our agenda. Um, our first item is always is to approve our minutes, uh, which have been sent out ahead of this meeting. Um, so if not, nobody has any questions, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. And if you don't mind when you make a motion, a second, just kind of give your name before you make that motion. That way make sure we note that for the record. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion, Chris Dorsey, to approve the minutes. I'll second, Annie Powell. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Okay, if not, all those in favor say aye by roll call vote. Karen? Aye. Okay, hold on. One second. I'm going to, um, Jack McAfee was able to join us, and I just need to note him on the, um, on the list. If you give me one moment. Sure. Okay, we're going for the roll call for the minutes, and aye is to approve Jeremy Bryson. Aye. Chanel Hippix. Chanel Hippix. I can't hear you. I can read your lips, though. We'll come back to you. Eric Asbo. Yeah. Katie Snyder. Yes. Aye. Matthew Snyder. Aye. Annie Powell. Aye. Jack McAfee. Thanks, Jack. He chatted. Um, yes. Um, Wayne Hines. Yes. Chris Dorsey. Aye. Autumn Friday. Aye. Scott Hanby. Scott chatted. Aye. Stephanie Deloquy. Aye. Julianne Meadows. Darren Collins. Aye. Mike Cagle. Aye. Loretta Hopper. Aye. Bart Johnson. Yes. Bart John. Okay, thank you. And Bert, I apologize if I missed you in the original roll call. Tom Calfa. Aye. Andrew Noel. Aye. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. The, um, let me get uh, check with Chanel Hippix. Aye. Okay, thank you. Yes, we can hear you. Um, the it passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, we're on to our second agenda item. Um, this is to open for public review and recommend to approve by resolution support of the Chattanooga Area Regional Transportation Authority safety targets. And for that, Courtney Geary will be giving us an overview. Courtney? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As part of the federal requirements for transportation performance management and target setting, CARTA is required to prepare a public transportation agency safety plan. The plan must include targets for the number and rate of reportable transit-related fatalities, injuries, and safety events 
as well as the mean distance between major mechanical failures by mode. A link to CARTA's full safety plan is available in the report for this item, and CARTA's safety targets have been excerpted from the plan and included in the packet for your review. Through all of their targets, CARTA aims to achieve better safety performance in 2021 compared to their 2019 safety performance or equivalent performance for MOES for which there were zero fatalities or major mechanical failures. The TPO is required to adopt transit safety targets to specific to our metropolitan planning area 180 days after CARTA establishes their targets through the safety plan. The targets must inform our investment priorities for upcoming transit projects, and we must incorporate the targets and safety plan into our regional transportation plan and transportation improvement program. CARTA must review and update their safety plan and targets annually, but the TPO isn't required to update our targets annually. We can instead choose to revisit our targets when we update the system performance report for our regional transportation plan. As a point of clarification, the transit safety targets are separate and distinct from the Highway Safety Improvement Program safety targets related to fatalities and serious injuries on public roadways, which I'll cover under the next agenda item. The action for your consideration today, again, is uh, for opening for public review and recommending to approve by resolution support of CARTA safety targets. I'm happy to answer any questions you all may have. Does anyone have any questions? So this is Eric Asbo. Um, quickly, uh, Courtney, I, I think I saw in there that this um, has been delayed slightly due to, to COVID that our, we had the ability to extend the time frame under which we were approving these. Are there any other um, impacts that we're seeing or changes that we're seeing as it relates to um, either that, that change in timing or, or in response to COVID as it relates to these? Um, I'm, I'm not. Um, I, uh, as you mentioned, um, CARTA did have through the end of the year, that deadline was uh, extended from the original uh, July deadline to complete the plan. Um, but they, they have been able to complete the plan before the deadline. So we decided to move forward um, with, um, with bringing the, the plan and the targets for you all to consider. Um, and as far as the COVID impacts, um, I don't remember seeing that explicitly addressed in the plan. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone from CARTA would want to speak further to that, that question. This is Annie. I think you summarized it well. Um, we had to the end of the year, but now we've certified it and are, are moving forward. Okay, yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the targets as presented. And again, state your name before the motion just so we can track that for the record. Motion for Johnson. I'll second that. This is Andrea Noel. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, is there any more discussion? Okay, we'll proceed with roll call, Karen. Okay, this is a motion to um, open for public comment and support. Um, Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Chanel Hippix? Okay, I think saying yes, you're still muted on our end. Um, Eric Asbo? Yes. Katie Snyder? Yes. Matthew Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? Thank you, Jack. Chatted, uh, yes. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hanby? Um, Stephanie Deloquie? Yes. And I'm sorry, Scott had chatted yes, so I noted that. Uh, Julianne Meadows? Julianne Meadows? 
Yes. Thank you. Darian Collins? Yes. Thanks. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bert Johnson? Yes. Tom Kalfa? Yes. Andrew Noel? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, the motion carries. Okay, thank you. We're on to our next agenda item. Um, and that is to open for public review and comment to approve by resolution support of the Tennessee and Georgia annual safety performance targets that we call PM1 for 2021. Again, I'll turn it over to Courtney Geary, who'll give us an overview. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Federal legislation also requires departments of transportation and metropolitan planning organizations to establish targets related to the safety of all public roadways. These targets include the number and rate of fatalities and serious injuries, as well as the number of non-motorized serious injuries and fatalities. Both TDOT and GDOT's targets for 2021 are available in the packet for you to review. TDOT invited the TPO to serve on a target setting working group and GDOT coordinated the sharing of their targets through the Georgia Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations. Uh, TDOT's target setting justification documentation is included in the packet to provide additional information on the rationale behind how their targets were established. Um, both TDOT and GDOT um, are seeing increases in fatalities, um, but decreases in serious injuries in the states, um, as well as rising number of combined serious injuries and fatalities for non-motorists. Um, both states look at the best fit uh, linear regression models for establishing their targets based on the trends that they're seeing. And TDOT also looked at impacts of COVID, particularly on vehicle miles traveled, um, at, uh, on the impacts of the, the vehicle miles traveled for the rates targets. Um, FHWA has conducted an assessment of the state's progress towards achieving their first year of targets, which was 2018. And Tennessee was found to have met and or made significant progress towards achieving their targets, but Georgia was not. And there are links to more info information about FHWA's assessment in, in your packet. The TBO must choose to support the state's 2021 targets or set their own. Um, and TDOT has requested that MPOs advise TDOT of their intent to support the state targets or set their own by December 31st. Uh, it's important to note that regardless of the decision made by the TPO, the local urban area funds that are allocated to the TPO would not be affected in any manner. Only the states could possibly incur penalties that would require a focus of their funds on particular project categories. TPO staff assessed interest in reconvening the ad hoc TPO safety target setting committee to review options available to the TPO for the 2021 target setting cycle. Uh, since only the city of Chattanooga was uh, expressed interest in participating, rather than reconvening the committee, TPO staff provided updates to the city's on, city on the progress made by the TDOT safety target working group. So the action for consideration by the TCC today is to open for public review and recommendation to approve by resolution support of Tennessee and Georgia annual safety performance targets for 2021. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from our committee? Thank you, Courtney, for a pretty thorough report. Um, if there's not any questions, I'll entertain, again, a motion. Just give your name before the motion and, and the second so we can keep track of that for the record. Matt Snyder, motion. Gway and Hines, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, is there any more discussion? Okay, we'll proceed to accept this recommendation by affirmation of yes. Uh, Karen, roll call vote. Okay. And thanks, Melissa, for confirming it's the public review. Yes. Um, Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Yes. Thank you. Eric Asbo? Yes. Kat Katie Snyder? Yes. Uh, Matt Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? Thank you, Jack chatted yes. Wayne Hines? 
Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hamby? Thank you, Scott. He chatted yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Stephanie Deloque? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bart Johnson? Yes. Tom Kalfa? Yes. Andrea Noel? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion carries. Thank you, Karen. Okay, our next agenda item, item number four, is to open for public review and recommend to approve by resolution support of the Tennessee and Georgia Transportation Performance Management Requirement for Pavement and Bridge Condition Targets and Adjustments. With that, I'll turn it over to Melissa Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this will be the third time that you've uh, seen this information in your packet. Um, because there's so much going on with performance measures, um, it's important that we get the information out um, multiple times so that you have time to digest it. There's a lot of material to cover, but there have been no changes to the information that was supplied to uh, the TCC and board in October. Essentially what we're doing here is um, affirming one adjustment for the four-year targets as part of the two-year interim reporting and progress. Uh, the one adjustment being made to um, the targets is for the four-year TDOT uh, percent of non-interstate pavement in poor condition. So of the measures for both pavement and bridge, we are only adjusting one. And that is, it was originally set at 4% um, and it has been revised to 5%. So that is for the percent of non-interstate pavement in poor condition. Other than that, everything remains the same. All the information has carried forward in your packet from October and we're just taking action to continue the support of the state's targets. And that's you, Tennessee Mel and Georgia, of course. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Um, is there any questions or comments on what Melissa shared? Uh, I have one uh, question. Um, so for all PM1, 2, and 3, these are just being sent out for public review. And uh, they, is this going back to the committees for approval? Uh, yes, this is the TCC's uh, recommendation to the board, and the board will take action then um, in December. Okay, and that'll be the last vote on this? On these ones that are on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Melissa. Um, I'll entertain a, a motion to, uh, again, uh, make sure say this correctly, uh, to open for public review and to recommend by resolution support of the Georgia Transportation uh, Performance Measurement Systems for our pavement and bridge conditions. So moved. Ms. Tom Kaiafa. That motion includes Tennessee. Includes Tennessee, yes. Second, Annie Powell. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any other discussion? Okay, we will proceed by roll call vote to support, again, offering these up for public review. Uh, Karen Rennick? Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Yes. Thank you. Eric Asbo? Yes. Katie Snyder? Yes. Matthew Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee, Jack um, chatted yes. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hamby? Scott chatted yes, thank you. Stephanie Deloque? Yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper. Yes. Bert Johnson. Yes. Tom Kalfa. Yes. And Andrew Noel. Yes. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion carries. Okay, we'll move to our next item. This number, item number five on our agenda is to open for public review and recommend to approve a resolution in support of the Tennessee and Georgia Transportation Performance Measurement Management, I'm sorry, requirement for system performance, targets, and adjustments. And you and Lee will give us an overview of this. Um, as explained the last time and also included in the package, the PM3, because it's, uh, we only cover two areas, it's the performance of the national highway system and the freight movement on the interstate system. Um, the main reason we only need to, um, to cover the two of the four measurement areas because TPO, Chattanooga TPO is an attainment area. In the 2018, the TPO adopted the state the um, Georgia and Tennessee state target. And then we have the option to review the four years target again during the mid year. And so um, Georgia decided to meet all the PM3 measure target. Um, so GDOT recommended keeping the existing targets on October 1st. And for the Tennessee, the current truck reliability 1.35 is a little over the four year targets, 1.33. So TDOT uh, adopt a revised four year target 1.37 and keep the travel time reliability on the NHS the same. So, um, so the action for today is to, um, for consideration is to open for public review and recommend to approve by resolution support of tendency in Georgia PM3 targets and adjustments. Is there any question? Thank you, Ewan. Um, if there's not any questions, I'll entertain a motion. Again, these will be, as Ewan noted, for public review and it will be then proceeding to TPO board for a final vote. Motion, Bert Johnson. Do you have a second? Second, Wayne Hawley. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Karen? Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Yes. Eric Asbo? Yes. Katie Snyder? Yes. Matthew Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? And Jack chatted yes, thank you. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hanby? Scott chatted yes, thank you. Stephanie Deloquy? Yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bert Johnson? Yes. And Tom is believed stepped out. Andrew Noel? Yes. Okay. Um, the motion carries, Mr. Chair. There are only three more roll calls to go. <laughs> We're almost there. I know. All right. Good doing a good, good job. Um, this is a, uh, item number six is to approve by resolution an amendment to the TCC committee bylaws for virtual meetings. And for that, I'll turn it over to Karen. Okay, this is a little bit change of pace for the um, performance measures. But as discussed last month, um, staff is recommending a change to the TCC bylaws to, rec um, to allow virtual meetings. Um, currently, the TCC is only allowed to do virtual meetings because of the governor, um, Governor Lee's executive orders. So in ever desire to be prepared for the future, um, whether there's a desire to meet virtually or have a hybrid meeting to on times of emergency or just to conduct business that is needed, um, an amendment to the TCC bylaws would be needed in order to accommodate that. So the additional language that would be added to the TCC bylaws is the same as was presented last month. And the language um, I hope is shown on the screen. I'm not able to access the screen right now. Um, but this is the same language that was um, 
added to the TPO board executive bylaws for the same reason that um, it would be added to the TCC bylaws. This would be final action by the TCC. Normally, um, this is a, a board that recommends to the executive board, but these would be for the bylaws just for the TCC. And we would notify the board um, that the change had been made as the staff report at their next meeting. Um, but this would be a resolution to bend the bylaws to allow that. I will note that it's still subject to um, governor's orders or change to the Open Meetings Act. So some of it's just a good business practice since we are having virtual meetings to note that the TCC can meet virtually. And some of it is in preparation for the future should there be a change either um, by, um, by um, executive order or to the Tennessee Open Meetings Act. Um, but we would still um, be in line with the public participation plan, which was adopted by the TPO executive board um, a couple weeks ago. So this would be a change. The change, um, I showed you the whole bylaws in the packet. We don't, all, uh, we don't revisit the bylaws too terribly often. So if you're new and interested, the bylaws are in the packet and it shows as a draft shows where that change would be located. Are there any questions? Yeah. Any questions? You know, it's something we would need to adopt as a change. It basically supports our, our capacity to continue meeting virtually when we need to. Um, I entertain a motion to accept if there are basically to, to approve this passage. So moved, so weigh in. I'll second that. This is Andrea. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, if not, I will go through a roll call vote. A yes would be to adopt the change. Um, Karen? Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Eric Asbo? Yes. Katie Snyder? Yes. Matthew Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? Thank you, Jack chatted yes. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hamby? Scott chatted yes. Stephanie Deloquy? Yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bert Johnson? Yes. And Andrew Noel? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The motion carries. Okay. We're on item number seven, which is to recommend to approve by resolution an amendment to the fiscal year 2020-2021 United Planning Unified, sorry, my Unified Planning Work Program. Not reading well today. Karen, you'll give us an overview, please. Sure. So uh, the Unified Planning Work Program, or the UPWP, is the um, work program of the TPO and shows the activities and fundings for the TPO's planning activities within the work period. Uh, we just started FY21 um, in October 21st, so we're in the second year of our two-year work program. The TPO does amend the work program when activities or the funding amounts change. And in this case, the amendment to the work program is really for two purposes. One is to put in additional CARTA FTA 5303 funding. Uh, CARTA has the opportunity to receive some additional FTA section 5303 funds from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to assist with their public transit agency planning efforts that are already detailed in the UPWP. The um, additional funding just would um, allow them to, you know, to carry those on. And the changes to the UPWP funding tables um, document the additional federal, state, and local funding for a total amount of $75,000. So that breaks out into an 80% um, federal, 10% state, and 10% local funding. Um, so that is um, really the reason we're moving more quickly. So when we talk to the second one, that um, the funding amount is not, not set as much. So the second purpose for this uh, UPWP amendment is to support the TPO's consultant efforts. So a um, couple months ago, um, the TCC recommended approval and the TPO executive board uh, uh, supported entering into contract with several firms. 
um, as we start the um, next cycle of the regional transportation plan, which is already underway. And we're finalizing work orders to complete some of that now. And the work tasks are currently part of the listed UPWP activities, but additional funding needs to be programmed to address that additional level of support. The proposed additional funds include the changes to the funding tables as shown in the meeting packet and hopefully on the screen. Again, I apologize, I can't see that. Um, I will note that because we are in process and um, we wanna move quickly so CARTA can access their funds and we are proposing to cancel our January TCC February meeting cycle, there will be some changes between um, what we present today at the TCC and what ultimately will be acted on by the executive board, just as we refine our work task and said schedule a little bit. So ultimately we're doing the work in the UPWP. We just wanna reflect the additional cost associated um, with the um, consultant support. And I'll note for the executive board when this is presented, what changes occurred between this TCC meeting and their action um, in mid-December. But with that six week gap, I just wanted to be clear that we will refine those costs a little bit more for the um, TPO consultant support, but not for the FTA 5303 funding that is set by CARTA. So are there any questions? Really we're asking support to um, amend the UPWP with your, um, there is an understanding that the um, cost may um, change some as we finalize work orders. There any questions? I, I will remind um, the TCC that we do save our dollars. We do have um, higher expenditure years as we are working on the regional transportation plan and the travel demand model. So um, we do have some leaner years and then we um, do have some bigger expenditure years and we are approaching this bigger expenditure mm -hmm. years. But as you know, when we talk about the UPWP, we talk about that five year cycle um, from plan adoption to plan adoption. And um, we are, um, and you'll be hearing more from um, Melissa and you and really um, ramping up our regional transportation plan efforts. So this is just reflective of that and is um, kind of a normal part of our five-year process. So does anybody have any questions before we move forward asking for a motion? Okay, if there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to accept the proposed amendment. Uh, so that'll be, again, a, a motion to uh, adopt that modification to the UPWP. So moved. This is Annie. Annie Powell. Second that. This is Andrea Noel. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, any other discussion? All right, if not, we'll proceed by roll call vote to accept the proposed amendment as presented. Karen? Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Chanel Hippix? Thank you. Um, Eric Asbo? Yes. K Katie Snyder? Yes. Matthew Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? Jack chatted yes. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hanby? Scott chatted yes, thank you. Stephanie Deloquy? Yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bert Johnson? Yes. And Andrew Noel? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Um, our last item on our agenda for action is item number eight. This is the one I was telling you about that we had a PDF that be sure to open on your screen. I'm gonna turn this over to um, Karen and Andrea who will, I think, walk us through the process for this. Uh, something we do every year, a ranking of projects. So I'll turn it over to Karen. Do you want to start off and go to Andrea? Is that how we want to uh, proceed? No, I'll defer to Andrea. Okay, Andrea, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to thank the committee for helping us rank these projects. These projects are in your area, so we want to know which ones are your priority. 
I know we've been asking you to do this every year, but I want to give a big picture overview for those of you who are new to the process or for the public who may wonder why we actually do this. So this list, um, and if you want to follow along, the list is on page 52 of the agenda packet. Um, but the list comes straight from Brian Hurst. He's the Assistant Director of TDOT's Programming and Administration Division. Brian oversees a database of all TDOT projects. He works with the department's executive management team in developing the comprehensive multimodal program, better known to you probably as the Governor's Highway Program or even the three-year plan is what we used to call it. But in other words, that is the list of project phases with dedicated funding to move forward during that time period. So every year in November, um, we give the list to the RPOs and the MPOs and we ask them to rank them. Then in December, we turn that uh, list back into Brian with your comments. And from January to April, TDOT is developing the highway program, which gets approved by the governor of Tennessee and the legislatures of Tennessee. Then sometime in April, TDOT provides that approved highway program to the public. During the development of the comprehensive multimodal program, the executive management team considers several criteria. So they consider traffic operations, multimodal and functional classification, economic development, roadway safety, regional rankings and the MPO ranks and environmental impacts. And each one of those criteria has a weight and it's run through the software, which provides a technical ranking based on all of those factors. So the team looks at the technical rank and they also consider the distribution of projects by region and by MPO to ensure that the program is equitable across the state. So that's the comprehensive multimodal program in a very simplified nutshell, but I'll be happy to answer any of those questions you have about the process or even give you um, Brian's contact information. So um, just let me know in the chat box and I'll be happy to share that with you. Um, but for now, I just wanna explain a few things on the list. If you're looking at the, um, at the list that we're sharing this year, um, first of all, all these projects have been on here since last year. So um, you should be familiar with most of them. Um, if you look at the bottom of this sheet, there's a little table that has um, colors for the phase of the project. If it's colored yellow, that means it's the same phase that you ranked last year. And you can see that most of the projects on here are still in the, the phase is still yellow. So you've ranked most of them last year. Um, you can see there's no blue on this sheet. So all there's no new products, projects. So you've seen all of these projects. Um, now look at the projects with the green phase. Um, there are three projects that have that are colored green. That means that you're voting for the project to move into a new phase. So that means it's moving up a phase. Um, a few more um, details about the sheet. We left the rankings on there from the last two years so that you can see how you all voted on it in 2018 and in 2019. Um, if there's no rank in the 2018 box, that means it was a new project last year to the list. Uh, we also left the comments that you provided last year for us um, as a reference. I just want to leave them in there so you could kind of jog your memory about remembering that project and what you might have thought about it. Um, but that column will be populated with your comments from this year before I turn it back into Brian. So the last column I want to talk about is the one that says 2020 Region 2 comments. Uh, we sat down with project development and the region two leadership and asked them to provide a little bit of explanation to help you make a decision on these. So um, let's look at your number one priority from last year. If you look about six rows down from the top, it was the I-75 project at the I-24 interchange. Interchange um, That was the second phase. Uh, so the region comments, if you'll notice in that region comment box, it says that should remain um, number one. Last year you voted at number one and they feel like you should vote at number one again this year. It's going to move quick um, and it is a high priority. So, um, But if you look at your second highest rank, which is last year that you ranked number two, it's third from the top. It's one of the body of Oaks, the Bonnie Oaks projects. Um, you can see that that phase is colored green. So that means um, it's in right away now, and you're voting to move it to construction. But if you look at the comments provided from Region 2, the comments actually say that this will take three to four years to complete the right away acquisition. So you may want to consider that in your ranking. Like, does it need to be number two this year since it's going to take three to four years for right away? So those are just some questions to um, consider when you're looking at these. So at this point, we Normally, we would have handed out this sheet and we'd give you about 10 to 15 minutes to write your ranks in and then we would collect them and tally them. This year's a little different, as we all know, but
But because we're virtual, Karen put this project list into a survey monkey. Uh, she sent that out earlier today in a link, and I think she also is putting it in the chat box now. It'll only be available to voting members, um, so not everyone's going to see that link. Um, so when she put them in the survey monkey, she put them in there by the 2019 ranking. So if you look at the projects and you want to rank them the same way you did in 2019, all you have to do is click the first one and it'll populate the numbers for you in the order that they were ranked last year. Um, and then you can just hit submit. But if you want to um, change up that ranking, if you want to reorder them, how you rank them, um, then you have to just click on one and drag it up and down and it'll show you the numbers in there. So I'm hoping that you had time to look at these earlier um, in the week when Karen sent them out. Um, it might have been easier to write down your ranks on the sheet and then put them into the survey monkey. Um, but I'll turn it over to Karen and let her describe how the process is going to work. Thanks, Andrea. So um, Zoom does have polling options, but not a ranking, robust ranking option. So the survey monkey link, I do see that some people are already working on that. Um, if you access the link and you have been um, participating in the roll call today, you are a voting member and we would um, encourage you to fill out the ranking. It's simply your name, your organization you're representing and then the ranking. There is a section for comments. Um, Andrew had noted that they're happy um, to um, um, happy to take any comments, but she doesn't really need them until December. Is that correct, Andrea? So That's if you fine. don't have time to fill out the comments today or you want to give some more thoughtful consideration, you can just email those, any comments about the projects to us at tpo at chattanooga.gov, and we, um, we package those. So the Survey Monkey link right now is only, visual, is only um, visible to panelists. Um, in autumn, I do see that um, you need um, access to the packet. Um, so if I, once we pause here, I will um, see if I can email that to you. It's kind of big, which is sometimes. Um, I'll while take we care of it, problems. Karen. Okay. I'll do it now. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Sorry. if you, oh, no, no. Thank you for bringing that up. We've been talking to IT about our Google and Hamilton County partners access issues. Um, so it looks right now that it takes about seven minutes to complete that um, survey. So we am um, just asking for John to give us a few minutes and then we might, we'll close it. And then um, you all will move on with the agenda and I will try to come back to um, come back to that and show you the results. Um, this is a recommendation to the TPO executive board. Usually they use that as their base to talk from. Uh, we don't normally um, approve by resolution, so it shows a little bit differently, but this is a recommendation that you'll be giving to the TPO executive board um, for, for their um, action and to move on. So you can take a few minutes and then um, John, once I see numbers start to tick up, but it's um, my clock shows it's 219. So why don't um, we take about four minutes while y'all work on that and then um, I'll come back, close it, and come back at the end of the meeting, John. Is that okay? Sure. So just to be clear, Karen, do you want me to go ahead and jump to the next agenda item? No, or, can or we wait? give folks a, chance, a little chance okay. to look at it? So I know right, sometimes sure. it's hard to think and listen. So I'll I got just you. I got you. Compared to the number of folks we have, and this is um, I'm just asking folks to be patient while we kind of work through the technology here. This is Julianne Meadows. Can I ask a question about a project? Okay. Yes. Um, it's the, there's a note on the fifth, the fifth project down, need to complete the first phase of SR317 before building this phase. And it looks like there's several phases of the Bonnie Oaks Drive 317. Which is the first phase? So um, that's a different project that you're looking at. The first phase of that project is already in construction. So 317, those are in, the Bonnie Oaks project has four phases, but the yeah. one you're looking at, I think you're looking at um, the Appison Pike three, part of 317, correct? Correct. Yes. So the first part of the Appison Pike project is already underway. So that's going to be a few years and while we construct that, and then we'll start moving on the second phase of that project. But it's not tied to the Bonnie Oaks parts. Got it. 
Okay, thanks. And Andrea, you'd asked me to bring um, Robert into the meeting. I don't see him as an attendee. So if I'm missing him or he's got in a generic login. Um, no, you're, you're, you're right. You're not missing him. He texted okay. me so that he had to be on a road audit. So. Okay. And we'll also remind our um, Georgia partners that are um, in the meeting that this is for the entire TCC. So um, I think all of our new folks are on the um, Tennessee side, but um, just as a reminder, this is for all TCC members. Um, I have a question. This is Loretta. Can okay, Loretta. Me? Yes, please go ahead. Um, I, was I was wondering how the ranking um, affects a project going into a next phase. If it gets not a high ranking, is it likely to not get pushed to the next phase? Um, can, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so the ranking is based on um, lots of different criteria. So the MPO portion of that ranking um, is about 11% of the total criteria that we use. And so even though your ranking is really important, there's a lot of other factors. If the funding is ready and the project is ready to move, um, it's probably still gonna move up. So, you know, your ranking is gonna prevent that. Does that answer your question, Loretta? Yes, it did, thank you. Okay, we have about 10 of our, I think 17 participants. I know Tom has left the meeting and Andrea, I'm assuming you're probably not voting. So um, we've, we'll give it a few more time. Uh, sorry, a little bit more time, a few more minutes. John distracted me. John, can we give it about two more minutes? It looks like um, we've got about five more people that might need to finish up. And then I will um, shut the survey down and export the results. Karen, would you like me to stop sharing now? You're muted. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, we just got a bath, I believe one or two more members. Um, and then I will close it. Karen, do you mind if I mention one more thing about the comments? No, please go ahead. So the comments are really important to us too. And I hope that you'll take the time after this survey. I know this is pretty quick. Um, and right now we're just looking for your ranking. Um, but by the end of December, I'm gonna be turning in this packet back to Brian. And we'd really love to have your comments in there. And where your comments matter the most is um, if it happens to come down to two projects that are ranked you know, almost identical, and they're trying to decide which one of those projects is going to move first, and they're ranked similar, then they're going to look at the comments and say, oh, well, they want it to be higher because of this. So you're 
comments at that point could push um, could push that project forward. So your comment is really important. So um, I would appreciate if you take the time to, to supply your comments. Just an example on Marion County a couple of years ago, I think it was Highway 41, we were doing a really good project and one of the comments was, we'd really love to have you start, you know, instead of doing the whole project from one work to the other, we'd love to have you work from both ends and meet in the middle because it just happened to be more important because there was more population at the ends. And so that's what we did. And so it really worked. And that's where your comments really come into play with this. So I hope that you will take the time to supply the comments. Okay. Um, John, um, I've closed the survey. I think we have everyone has responded hopefully. And if you want to move on, um, sure. I will share my screen um, barring any technical difficulties or my difficulties. So thanks. Okay, we'll move on to our next agenda item, and that's the official notice of our 2020 annual listing of obligated projects for state and local governments. And Betsy Evans will be giving us an overview. Thank you. Uh, federal legislation requires the MPOs to publish an annual listing of projects that have been obligated in the previous uh, federal fiscal year. So we're looking at October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020. Um, this report is on our website. There is a link in your packet that goes to the report. Um, these lists are generated by T.G.DOT G dot, and CARTA and then sent to us where we compile it and publish the list. Um, there was approximately 215 million obligated on the Tennessee side, 5 million approximately on the Georgia side and CARTA obligated approximately 13 million during uh, federal fiscal year 2020. Um, please feel free to contact me if you have questions about any specifics or any specific projects. Um, I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, if not, thank you, Betsy, for giving that update. Um, we do have um, several staff reports that are in your packet um, also have a very also a celebratory announcement. I'm going to turn it over to Courtney to share with you all some good news. Uh, you may have not heard from our past TPO board meeting, but I'll let her kind of make that announcement. Courtney. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is my great pleasure to share with you all that the National Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations awarded the 2020 Excellence in MPO Staff Achievement Award to our very own Melissa Taylor. Uh, the award was officially announced at the AMPO virtual conference at the end of October. The full strategic long-range planning staff, along with Karen Rennick, worked together to submit a nomination for Melissa. And we really appreciate TPO members Teresa Claxton of the FHWA Tennessee Division and Lisa Magnano of CARTA for providing quotes that we could include with the nomination. Uh, I hear from you all often that you appreciate Melissa's tireless dedication to the TPO and our region, um, but it's really special for her to be recognized for her work at the national level as well. So I hope you all will join me in congratulating Melissa on her accomplishments. Congratulations. Congratulations, Melissa. Congratulations, awesome. Thanks folks. Okay, Karen, are you ready to share um, the results? I am. Are you all able to see a um, Excel table? A nod, if you are, okay. Um, so, Please, pardon, oh, you, it is small. Okay, yeah. let me see if I can um, zoom in here. With running the meeting, I can't really see everything. So let's do it this way. Are you all seeing a list? Um, ooh, that's not it. Okay, are y'all able to see the list? Um, this is great, thank you for the thumbs up. Um, so this is taking the score um, and usually the lowest number means it's the top priority, but SurveyMonkey's figured that out and gives the highest score and weights it. So um, I will go back and double check everything and make sure everything's been entered um, correctly. But right now um, the action that been moving forward are the I-75 interchanges 
followed by um, the two of the Bonnie Oaks projects, Appison Pike, the other Bonnie Oaks, um, and then down from there. Um, I, we will send this back out to you all because your board members um, in the organizations you represent will be acting on it in December. So if you um, want to be able to talk to them in advance, you will have the TCC scoring. I will confirm that and um, you'll get an email from Renette um, with the um, confirmation of the TCC ranking. And also we'll export any comments we receive. So we'll follow up with an email in the next week with that. But there, Andrea, do you have any questions or does anyone have any comments to Andrea? Um, but otherwise, Mr. Chair, we would just want a motion to uh, move this on to the um, TPO Executive Board. Okay, if there's not any questions, um, I'd entertain okay. a motion to support submitting this to our TPO Board as a recommendation from this body. Chris Dorsey, so moved. A motion. Is there a second? Second. Third Johnson. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye via roll call. Karen? One second. That was Chris Dor Dorsey and Bart Johnson with that the is motions. Correct. Thank you. Um, Jeremy Bryson? Yes. Janelle Hippics? Eric Asbo? Yes. Katie Snyder? Yes. Matt Snyder? Yes. Annie Powell? Yes. Jack McAfee? Thank you, Jack. He chatted yes. Wayne Hines? Yes. Chris Dorsey? Yes. Autumn Friday? Yes. Scott Hanby? Thank you, Scott. He chatted yes. Stephanie Deloquie? Yes. Julianne Meadows? Yes. Darian Collins? Yes. Mike Cagle? Yes. Loretta Hopper? Yes. Bert Johnson? Yes. And Andrea Noel? Yes. Okay, Mr. Chair, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And, and just to get a reminder, is understand Kurt and Karen, they can send their comments in as well. Is that right? Yes, please do. We can. Um, Andrew, would you have a prefer to have us collect them and then send them to you? That or send them? Yeah, okay. that would be great to have them to you, Karen. Thank you. So um, any comments um, can go to tpo at chattanooga.gov, kind of our standing email address. Um, so expect an email back out from us within the week with the results. Um, and we'll also attach the materials that Andrea sent if you do want to discuss those with your board member. Okay. Um, any other updates or announcements uh, before we go to public comments? I have a quick question, Karen. Uh, looking ahead at the schedule of upcoming meetings, you had mentioned something about the ones near the beginning of the year. Um, are you, I think you had mentioned earlier in this meeting that those may not be. Yes. The Senate. So Eric, right now we did act on the UP and um, that no, our normal January action items we've covered today, which are usually the prioritization list um, and safety. So as of right now, we are um, planning on canceling the January TCC February meeting cycle. But if you've been with the TPO long enough, you know that um, sometimes things come up to move projects forward or to act on to move um, everything forward. So we will, as we get a little bit closer to that January date, we will um, confirm the cancellation or confirm the meeting date. So if you don't mind keeping that January date on your, um, your calendars, and we will confirm that um, if we just want to be prepared if anything comes up within the next, you know, six weeks or so. But thanks for the question. So yeah, the date on your agenda, um, if you could calendar it, knowing that we might cancel that. Okay, any other uh, announcements or questions from our board or our committee, I should say? If not, I just want to note again, Karen, that's correct. We had nobody pre-registered to speak at today's meeting, that correct? So we have no public comments at this time? That's correct. We asked people either to just sign up and let us know or to provide written comments and we received neither. Okay, thank you. 
Um, if, if without that, I guess we'll then we'll adjourn. I'll just take a motion and second to adjourn. I don't think we need a roll call vote to adjourn, but I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Motion. Bert Johnson moves. Second that, Andrew and Noel. Andrew and Noel. Second it. All right. Thank you all. You all have a safe week. Everybody stay safe and well, and we hope to see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you.